welcome back to my channel. If you are new here and like the video, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button for more content. Thank you for watching. Hello everybody, welcome to the second to last part of the You Are My Mother 2 series. Again, I am so, so, so sorry for this extremely delayed update for this series. I guess you could say writer's block was a huge pain in my ass. So I'm not going to keep you guys long because um, <laughs> you guys waited long enough. Now, the last part will unfortunately be updated in June because I will be in um, Germany abroad and next month. Oh, it's next month. Sorry, I cannot film in an intro. With that being said, um, I cannot take my equipment, so I, it'll just have to wait till June, and I'm so sorry about that. I, I was going to try to get these back to back, but I cannot, so y you just get this, and then an update later. Well, enjoy! His lover, his world, his very purpose was gone and limp, now in Victor's arm while Natsuo stumbled towards JJ. The reason for Akatero's sacrifice. The reason he is dead. He was blinded by rage and sorrow. He was unable to hear his family's pleads to get it together. Natsuo, stop! Snap out of it! Natsuo. He would hear nothing of it. Enough. Enough! He was going to kill him. All of them. Akateru was dead. It was all their fault. Why would he show remorse and sympathy to the enemy when they... They took everything away from him. His brother, his freedom, his love. All of it. He was going to take back his life and kill them all. He let out a shuddered breath with vapor appearing to be visible through his exhale. His eyes glowed to an icy blue, burning like a fiery oblivion, but what seemed to reflect blue, icy daggers. His hand twitched, frost emerging through his fingertips, creating a tingling sensation, but he didn't notice. His glare was fixated on his enemy. Yuri gasped and ran in front of Natsuo, attempting to push the taller boy back. Natsuo, listen to me! You need to back down! No. He snapped back, snarling towards JJ's direction. You'll lose control if you keep this up! The small traces of frost was now sharp icicle dagger shooting from his palms. Elisa and Lev stared in horror. What had happened to their brother? Natsu, look at me! Whether it was the father and son bond, or something more in depth, Natsuo's glowing eyes connected with the older. I know. It's hard. And what happened? It's unforgivable. He had to raise his voice from the magic swirling around the boy who was battling to keep at bay. But if you keep looking back all of the time, you'll never get ahead. Natsuo raised his hand, ice covered the floors, and simultaneously trapped JJ in a line of icicles, pinning him against the wall with a single, more sharper weapon inching closer to his throat. Trust me, I know. What could you know? He growled back. It was only then that Victor remembered that Natsuo wasn't there when he revealed himself to Elisa and Nev. However, this wasn't the time to come clean, not when he just lost the love of his life. I once lost everything too. I let it take me down for years. Over 20 years, I let nothing but rage and dismay consume me. Be better than me. Don't do this. JJ was simply a victim of Kai's manipulation. He certainly wasn't innocent, but he didn't deserve death. But he... he was breaking. The eyes frosting over his features were cracking, resembling like the walls he put up around his heart. It was almost like a suit of armor, while the cold steel would protect him. It shut off his heart. His feelings and emotions were casted aside locked away in steel-cold armor. 
Akateru had allowed that armor to be taken off, even though it may have been temporary. But it was off. With so, so many regrets. He's dead! He's fucking dead, Victor! How can I- His voice cracked, letting his tears fall down like gravity dragged it to earth soil. The tip of the dagger was only centimeters from impaling JJ's throat. I know. We know. You're not alone. I have no other choice but to collect his soul in retribution for his demise. Natsuo! He glanced towards his older sister, someone that he was fortunate enough to always being something constant in his life. She bit back the pain of her brother's frost, touching her own skin, and embraced him. Don't do this. Don't stoop to his level. You are better than this. Her strong words contrasted her tears. Everyone lost someone that day. He brought his hand down, not letting the icicle pierce through JJ's throat, yet decided to keep it there, so if he moved, he would certainly pay the price. He sunk to his knees in defeat, letting the sorrow consume him. What in the hell was that? The former Libra was still both in awe and horror of magic emitting from the boy. Was that magic? He wasn't sure. There's no time to explain. We need to get to Kai. Wait. Miwa pulled at the older's arm. Do Elisa and Lev have powers too? She was willing to wait for the details, but she needed to know this. This concerned her own wife's well-being. Yes, although they lay dormant as Nods was once had. How do you even know this? That will be explained later too. The sense of doubt and even suspicion was beginning to make sense. There was too many secrets. Miwa turned towards Akuteru, who laid still on the ground. We'll be back for you, old friend. With that, the group left to confront Kai. He had failed him. That useless, nobody of an ice skater had failed Kai. He was enraged, yet scolded himself, knowing that he should have expected as much. After all, he was nothing but an arrogant fool. Well, it looks like I'll have to take care of things myself. He rolled up his sleeves, glaring at the monitors with one eyebrow raised, intrigued at Natsumo's power awakening. How he yearned for the power of his own, yet maybe he could make the boy his weapon. He was artificially created, so he was an object, not a person. He never saw past the fact that even still, he was capable of feeling emotions. That much was proven when he grieved of Akateru. He'd overseen it. This will all be over soon, and the three children will be mine. He turned away from the monitors, making his way to the main doors, where the family was just on the other side, ready for battle. Now or never. Natsuo was out of commission for the time being, given he was both mentally and physically in no state to be fighting. It seems that besides the obvious despair he overcame, it seemed that his magic power was stressed. The term magic had only been a fictional thought. Lev was certain that it wasn't real. Or so he thought. Supposedly, he had magic. Nothing made sense, although to be frank, his life didn't make sense. A simple, normal, high school boy turns out to be a kidnapped, runaway, artificial being with magic? Yeah, a vacation was long overdue. Natsuo's power was frost. It almost made him curious at what his and Elisa's were, but now was it the time. That was made clear the moment Kai stepped through those doors. The physical image of him made him think on those horrid memories of being stuck in the basement, two separate crucial points in his life. Well, well, I'm so grateful my children came running back to me with open arms. Oh, shut up. Fuck you. He glared, cringing at the use of father. 
His life was spent thinking that Monster was his father, but he knows the truth now. Victor and Yuri were his fathers. He knew it now. A surge of power ignited in his chest with a burst of confidence, knowing he could surely do this. Hostile, I see. Give up the act, Kai. It's seven against one. We took down your goonies. It's over. He had no one else to fight for his meaningless cause. While the battle had just begun, it was over. Well, it would be no fun if we ended it here without some casualties. You call Akatero's death not a casualty? He had to calm down, feeling his rage increasing to the point it triggered frost to form in his fingertips once more. Only Victor's comforting touch made him afraid himself from using it. Kai ignored him, to be expected though. What's your goal here? It's over. You're surrounded. Oh, my dear son, I haven't spent the last 20 years doing nothing. This building we are in at this very moment was constructed by my men, meaning if a time did come that my plans fell to ruin and I lost what I worked for, no one would leave alive. Everyone froze. Unfortunately, that time has come. This place is set to self-destruct at any moment now. I will die along with my work and you're going down with me! You psychopath! He began laughing hysterically, singing chills down Yaku's spine. We have to leave. He found his hand intertwining with Love's, who gave a gentle squeeze. You can try, but you can't run! Each bomb in this building is set to go off at separate times. Try to dodge them. Overcoming with rage, Victor stomped over and swung his fist back before connecting with Kai's jock, feeling surprised seeing a tooth get knocked out. The blow brought him down to the ground before the Russian yanked him back up by the collar of his shirt before he spoke in a thick Russian accent. Guess I'll see you in hell. We got to go. We need to at least try. Miwa was the first to drag Elisa out, and everyone followed in pursuit. All except for Natsuo. Wait, what about Aki? We have to go back for him. Everyone's silence spoke a million words. Guys? Akadaru, he's in the other room. We have to get him. Natsu, we got to go. No. I'm not leaving without him. He was close to tears, not understanding why the world hated him so much. We have to leave him. Why? He's dead. He said it so bluntly, it even surprised him. Don't you think I fucking know that? You're alive. We have to hurry. Bringing him would only slow us down. He walked over, placing his hand on the shorter shoulder. He died protecting you. You have to live for him. He's already gone, but you still have time. What do I tell Kate? His voice cracked, mentioning the blonde, Akateru's little brother. The news would surely crush him. Everyone knew it. We'll figure that out, when we make it out alive. He held his hand out. Let's go home. He would be broken for a while, a long while, maybe even his entire life, but Love was right. Akatero didn't give his life for Natsuo to throw it away. As much as it hurts, he has to fight. He has to live. He grabbed a hold of his brother's hand. The first round of bombs exploded, shaking the building, making that their cue to run. We gotta go! The group ran like their very life depended on it, and it quite literally did. If they didn't push for it now, there would be no use of ever pushing to reach the finish line. Another round of bombs went off, and from the sound of things, it's where they just were, where Kai was. Kai was dead. 
A throb of pain and knots to his chest emerged, knowing that's where Akateru was. By now, his body was one with the rubble and debris. Another shock of explosion sent Yaku flying backwards. His ears were ringing and his hands were sticky with warm blood coming from his side when landing on a sharp rock. Yaku! Lav backed up, grabbing a hold of the shoulder, half picking him up and half dragging him, not finding the right momentum to fully pull him up while running. Just leave me. He mustered out, knowing if it came down to it and someone couldn't run, carrying someone would slow anyone down. Bullshit. The outburst caught the latter off guard. Usually he'd been so monotone since he came back. What? I love you, Yakusan. I'm not leaving you, not when you were still alive. He loved him? It had been so long since he heard those beautiful words from the taller's lips. It was enchanting. Never again would they be separated. Even if this was their true end, there would be no regrets, no remorse. They were together, happy and in love. While it might not have been long, this sure was hell of an adventure. Powers or not. Artificial or natural, Yaku still loved Lev and thought nothing differently from him. Yaku nodded his head, taking his lover's shoulder and pulling himself up the rest of the way so Lev can focus on running. Let's live. Lev smiled. We still have that future to get to, remember? Even after they somehow managed to get out of the building with minimum injuries, the group still ran knowing one big explosion was yet to come. Once it did, it rocked everyone off of their feet. It even dazed some of them. Left groaned, turning to his side, noticing the lack of Yaku next to him. Yaku? He shot up, despite his body protesting at the mere thought of it, seeing Yaku meters away, still. Too still. He crawled over to fight him. Laughing? Yaku-san? We made it! It was true. Everyone made it, excluding Akteru. Kai was gone, and this was the end of everything. Although it did still bug him at the lack of the presence of his mother. However, she wouldn't pose much of a threat in the rebel. They trudged along to the plane. Much complaints and an understandable silence, not so well. Who could blame him? After boarding, they began patching up some wounds, Lev thanking his surprisingly rich fathers for having their own medical staff. They were going home. Alright, that is the end of the 14th part of the You Were My Mother 2, and I guess if you really didn't want to watch the finale of the series, which is the next part, I guess you could say that this is the end. Although, I'm sure some of you guys may like this, except for the obvious Akatoda situation. If you are interesting, there will be more closure in the finale, so I hope to see you guys there. Although, if you did not hear in the intro, I will go ahead and remind, I will not be getting the finale out until June, because I obviously won't be in the country, so please bear with me and I apologize profusely. Not really. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you'd like to be kept up to date, check out any of my social medias. I hope that you all have a wonderful day or evening.